Now, next, we're returning to one of our key pillars at Signal, which is artificial intelligence. And we have a towering figure uh, in the field uh, as our next guest, Dr. Fei-Fei Li, the inaugural Sequoia Professor in the Computer Science Department at Stanford University, co-director of Stanford's Human-Centered AI Institute. Fei-Fei served as the director of Stanford's AI Lab from 2013 to 2018. During her sabbatical from Stanford uh, for about a year and a half or so, she was vice president at Google and served as chief scientist of the AI machine learning uh, group at Google Cloud. Uh, Dr. Lee's current research interests span almost everything there is to know about artificial intelligence, machine learning, deep learning, computer vision, AI and healthcare, and ambient intelligence systems for healthcare delivery. Welcome to Signal, Dr. Lee. Thank you, John. So, so good. great to be here. Yeah, it's great to have you. I, I think this may be the first time we've ever spoken, but I've just, I've read your papers, I've read about you. It's, it's an honor to be speaking with you. Um, and uh, I, I like your background. It's very focused on, I can just see you. So it's wonderful. <laughs> I, it is the first time we meet, but I also realized we shared a uh, very, very uh, important part of our, our lives uh, in the same place, which is Pasadena. Oh, you have to be kidding me. You can't, are you from <laughs> Pasadena? No, I, um, uh, I did my PhD at Caltech. Across the street from Pasadena. my high school. Uh, I, went to, <laughs> I went to high school across the street from Caltech and uh, always knew that I would not be going there. <laughs> it's a bunch of nerds. <laughs> Although I've made a career of, uh, of writing about and, and, and talking with people who are far smarter than me about things like artificial intelligence. So there you go. Um, thank you for coming to Signal. Really appreciate it. Um, your role at Stanford, among many other things, includes being the co-director of the uh, previously mentioned uh, human-centered artificial intelligence group. What is human-centered AI? Yeah, thank you for asking that question. So AI is a technology that is really um, the, the latest the wave of a, of a technological and scientific revolution that we have seen. And it's so massive and horizontal. Uh, it really involves, uh, you know, um, from very smart uh, data analytics all, all the way to machine learning, machine decision making and assistive technology to human decision making and action. So under this context, um, it's very important to recognize that AI is impacting and will be impacting everyone's lives, every business. And this really begs the question, uh, what kind of future we want given this technology is revolutionizing our businesses and lives. And the future that I personally want and so many of my colleagues at Stanford, as well as in the field of AI, um, want something that is uh, human benevolent, want this technology to bring the positive potentials and really not the negativity that would impact individuals, communities, um, uh, and people around the world. So human-centered AI is really about uh, ensuring the development of AI as well as the practice, the deployment, the application of AI is, um, is uh, uh, human-missioned, mm -hmm. is positive, is benevolent. Mm -hmm. So that is the definition of human-centered AI. How, how does that, how do you put that in practice? I, I've read a lot. Um, I mean, they're, they're, I'll say one thing about the, you know, having been a long standing student of, of, of Silicon Valley in particular, um, no technology has raised as much proactive concern uh, as artificial intelligence. You did not see, uh, you know, the winners of the early, uh, you know, uh, technology uh, era of the 70s, 80s, and 90s, being super concerned about the emergence of Google or Facebook. Um, but you see Bill Gates, Elon Musk, you know, and others, you know, taking very strong stances about artificial intelligence and saying, we can't get this one wrong. So how do you take that concern and put it into practice? 
Yeah, great question. Um, I think uh, beyond the, the, the boundaries of Silicon Valley, I think rightfully so, the whole world is concerned about such a powerful technology. I think the bottom line is that uh, we need to um, recognize what is the end game here, right? The end game is to, to create um, a technologically driven business or application or, or, or the technology itself to benefit humans. So to do that, uh, one of the most important thing is to, to embed the human societal ethical design into, the, into every step of the way from the, the research, basic science research, to the education, to the application and to the policy making of AI, we need to embed ethics and uh, and human concerns mm -hmm. um, and human values into this technology. Right. Um, you know, this gets into some sticky wickets, I would say, because when you when you when you start to think about answering a question like what is ethical, um, people disagree. Uh, and you know, uh, how do you go about uh, your research? Uh, when there, you know, you're, you're very, it's a very thin layer between, you know, pure science and politics. Yeah, great question, John. So, so first of all, I, I am speaking from the perspective of an uh, academic world where the, the, the bulk of our activity at Stanford under the, uh, the work of uh, Human Center AI Institute is uh, focusing on research, education, and uh, um, of course, um, relevant application area and policy outreach. So, so you, your question is, you know, how, what is ethics and, and whose values? And I think the most important thing to recognize is actually not immediately give you what I think or what anyone think um, is really a methodology and how do we approach this. And what's really important to us at Stanford High is the multi-stakeholder approach, is that this technology is fundamentally impacting everyone's lives. So when we think about how to develop this technology or how to apply it or how to you know, um, engage in policy uh, research and policy advisory, we need to think about this inclusive um, multi-stakeholder and multidisciplinary approach. I'll give you an example. Um, at Stanford, in, in my own lab, we do um, healthcare research. Uh, part of our research is healthcare, especially using smart sensors to help doctors monitor patient safety. For example, in a patient room, a uh, uh, fall risk, whether it's in uh, ICU or in a senior home, is extremely painful. Uh, uh, you know, a, a big concern. It's extremely painful if it happens, and it costs lives. And um, so there is a good cost to use this technology. But even with the good cost, uh, we need to involve multi-stakeholder and multidisciplinary um, method to understand uh, what, are, what are the other consequences, for example, privacy, for example, data fairness, for example, uh, the way to communicate the, 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 the use of this technology. These are all really important. Our team, you know, myself is trained as a computer scientist. I do not pretend I have the answers. So our team in, includes bioethicists, includes computer security uh, experts, includes uh, law scholars, includes doctors, nurses, patients. And when we design the AI algorithm from the get-go all the way to, um, you know, co-researching this at hospital with doctors, we want to make sure the multi-stakeholder, multidisciplinary approach is uh, applied at every point of the way to ensure that kind of um, inclusive value and and the 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 ethical concerns that that applies to everybody. I, I really appreciate you bringing that up. The idea of a team of multiple stakeholders, you know, 
uh, all involved in both the decision making as well as the reaction to unforeseen consequence, which is what happens when you're at the edge of discovery. There's unforeseen uh, opportunity and, and risk. So, so now I get to ask the you know, 12-year-old version question that I would ask if, if I were talking to you as a, as a kid. You know, I grew up on, uh, on movies uh, where AI was the villain. Um, and they're still being churned out every single year. You, there, there must be half a dozen of them uh, where you know, artificial intelligence is unleashed. And for whatever reason, it's always mad at us. Uh, it always wants to get rid of us. Um, now, Hollywood needs a bad guy, and artificial intelligence has been that bad guy for the Terminator series and the Matrix, and, you know, it just goes on and on. Um, the 12-year-old kid in me wants to ask, is that possible? I mean, <laughs> is it possible that generalized artificial intelligence could escape and, 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 and you know, turn us all into paper clips? <laughs> I love that question. I, 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 have, uh, I have kids at home not far from being 12 year old, so we talk about these things. Uh, first of all, it's a fantastic question. So, so first of all, in defense of uh, movie industry, uh, there are a couple of uh, <laughs> movies that AI is not the villain. The, the one I chose for my kids to watch is uh, Big Hero 6, right? <laughs> yes. So there we go. We do have a good robot. Uh, it's also... <laughs> Um, a healthcare robot, which I was very happy. <laughs> um, another, another. I grew up watching Adam. It's a Japanese uh, robot series where oh. Adam was uh, um, was a really uh, benevolent robot, a boy robot. So, so, so at least I was inspired by that. <laughs> I'm glad to hear it. <laughs> so, so, but. Um, so, so in all seriousness, I, I think it's actually fair. It's fair that we're concerned about this. Um, not that the technology is so advanced that we think there is AGI or what people call artificial general intelligence, uh, intelligence turning into machine overdoor. It's not the concern I have. It's the concern at the end of the day um, about people. You know, we... Human civilization is, um, is, is a journey that never stopped innovation. From the day we discover fire and, and putting you know, some branches into tools and sharpening stones to cut, we are innovating. But every time we innovate, um, the hero and the villains are within ourselves. Mm. How we build tools, how we use them, how we use them to ourselves and how we use them to each other is the core of the question. So I, I do, you know, repeatedly say to any, anyone I, I come across, let's stop using AI as a subject in a sentence. You know, AI will do this, AI will do that. Mm -hmm. Let's use humans as the subject because the responsibility is on us. The responsibility is on the makers of the technology. It's on the practitioners of, of the technology. It's on the business leaders. It's on the lawmakers. It's on the civil society. Yeah. And, um, and Hollywood or, or the movie industry actually is a lens to ourselves. That concern about how technology is developed and used is a inner cry of who we are and what we want to be. So I think that's a really important question and it's a responsibility for all of us. That was extraordinarily well said. Um, uh, and I appreciate you, you you laying it out there. It, it makes me reflect on two things. One is the conversation I had earlier with Sundar Pichai, uh, and, and the other is the hot water that uh, Facebook has been in recently, uh, and I guess I should say, you know, over the past few years. Um, when pressed, both of those companies, who I admire greatly, uh, people in the company and, and the achievements of those companies, have used AI as a way to say, look, we're aware of the problem and our best AI is on it, <laughs> right? Uh, content moderation, for example, uh, Facebook has leaned heavily on, look, we, we've got great AI, it's getting better every 
you know, every day, um, and, and we're going to solve this problem. And when I asked Sundar about the uh, questions of can we preserve privacy in an advertising uh, setting, uh, where profiling, at least in the, in the, in the eyes of many, uh, has gotten a bit out of hand, um, he's like, I think we can engineer our way out of this problem. Uh, if you were to take what you just said and, and say, you know, it's, it's, it's incumbent on human beings, uh, not AI, to solve that problem, it puts the responsibility and the authority back, I think, where it belongs. Um, so I hope that your words resonate uh, out there in the debate that we've been having over the last two days on the policy response. Um, to what extent do you and or your lab uh, uh, get involved in that policy conversation? I see that you were appointed to the National Artificial Intelligence Research Resource Task Force. Uh, that sounds very official. What is it? <laughs> let me uh, let me answer this immediate question. I do want to get back to your comments about uh, Google, Facebook, and Silicon Valley tech. So, so the the we do believe at Stanford HAI that uh, um, it is so important to engage in poli uh, with policymakers. Not that we want to be directly making laws. It's just that our uh, scholarship, our interdisciplinary expertise, and our ability to Build a uh, platform um, to to in, engage policymakers with multi stakeholders is is an important role we can play. So one of the effort we did last year was recognizing uh, the the dire need of um, rejuvenating America's ecosystem for basic science innovation in technology. As much as we hear a lot of advances from big tech companies, these are uh, you know, only a handful of big tech companies today are dominating the AI technology within their walls. And uh, and the resources, the compute, the data, the talents are all being um, centralized into these uh, handful of companies. And uh, there's nothing wrong of their own ambition and practice, but as a nation, especially a nation that's rooted in democracy and, and human rights, human values, we need to make sure America continues to innovate, continues to educate the next uh, generations of um, uh, technologists, entrepreneurs, continue to lead. And in order to do that, we need a healthy ecosystem, including our basic science research and education. And the National AI Research Resource um, Task Force is tasked to um, partner with the federal government and the industry to, um, to come up with some ideas on how we can uh, rejuvenate this uh, this ecosystem by um, by uh, funneling resources into the public sector, into the education and research um, um, sectors of, of this uh, important field. Yeah. And this connects to the earlier comment you have about the, the big companies. I, I do advocate that the big companies do not rest their responsibility on codes and algorithms. I think at the end of the day, it takes human leadership and human responsibility. And also, HAI is trying to help and provide a platform we have corporate partnership programs at HAI where through our forum, not only we can have open exchanges of uh, the latest technology, but even more important, we build a platform where the industry leaders and practitioners, uh, policymakers, civil society, um, scholars and experts from Stanford and students can have very important and critical conversations. Um, and, and this is really important that it's such an important thing. AI is such an important technology that will you know, impact our nation and our world that we need this kind of human-centered um, you know, discourse practice and, uh, and efforts. Yeah, so, uh, well, I can't tell you how pleased I am both to hear your story and your passion and commitment. Uh, to the kinds of conversations and teamwork uh, that will allow us to take this extraordinary technology and use it for the good of society. Um, so, Dr. Lee, thank you so much for your time, for joining us at Signal. Really enjoyed the conversation. 
thank you, john. thank you.